Sí, se quedó sin ella. Ajá. Sí, pero con qué. Ay. Me dice aquí que estamos live. Sí, estamos live. Okay. Hola, hola. ¿Cómo hola. están por acá? Hola, doctor. Hola, hola, muy Qué bien. Gusto. Gracias, ¿Cómo van todos? saludarle. Qué bien. Bienvenidos sí. a todos a, la, a nuestro live. Esperemos que pueda ser muy útil para todo el mundo. Gracias, doctor. Este día, chicas, eh, le damos la bienvenida al doctor Redondo, uno de nuestros cirujanos plásticos eh, que pertenece a la red de Surgeon Med y que forma parte de, de los excelentes cirujanos que tenemos acá en la República Dominicana. Eh, iniciamos con cada una de las preguntas que ustedes tengan por aquí y él va a contestarle todas sus inquietudes. Muy bien. Okay. Okay. Formalmente, doctor, bienvenida. ¿Cómo estuvo, cómo ha estado su día el día de hoy? Largo. ¿Largo? Sí, sí, sí muy largo. <risa> eh, okay. eh, la, la situación de andar en varias ciudades eh, okay. realmente tiene una logística muy, muy, muy fuerte. Sí. ¿sabes? Okay. Pero vamos ahí. Vamos ahí. ¿Cuáles son lo, los centros, doctor, donde usted labora? Ahí vamos a contestar ya. El principal es en inglés, ya. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, I work in a different hospitals in different cities of the Dominican Republic. The main office is in Puerto Plata, that's the north coast, a touristic city, and with uh, main, my main hospital, my main office. So, I also work here in Santo Domingo, where we are right now. And sometimes, I have to mention it because I do work there, also in Punta Cana. Punta Cana is not the main priority because everything is more expensive there. Your stay, the flights, uh, everything is more expensive. So usually patients prefer to go or Santo Domingo or to Puerto Plata, but it's available as well. Okay, perfecto. Eh, ¿Cuántas veces a la semana usted puede trasladarse acá a, a Santo Domingo a la cirugía? Okay. Santo Domingo, I, surgeries are only one week per month okay. and I just do all my surgeries in that week. It's about five to ten. I will never do more than two surgeries in a day. Okay. Usually only one. If there's a small surgery, well, the week I can do two okay. surgeries, but they have to be more related to the length of the surgery because I also have to see the patients in the afternoon. Okay. So I try to do surgeries in the morning and to have all the afternoon free to see my patients. Okay. So usually it's like that. There are some months like March mm -hmm. that we have a big income of patients from abroad. Okay. And that month I, I don't only work one, month, one week, I work way more than one week here in Santo Domingo. Okay. But usually it's like that. Then I come every week, at least one day per week, to see all my patients. ¿Cuántas pacientes por día, doctor, usted opera? As I said, now, maximum two, only one. Okay. ¿Cuál es el índice de masa corporal límite para, para las pacientes que vienen donde usted? Well, it's, it's not a limit itself. I don't, I don't have a problem with the body mass index. I have a problem with the amount of fat that I can harvest. I am considered one of the safe surgeons. I do apply the rules that safety requires. So I don't go over six liters of fat. Okay. So when you come here with a body max index over 30, over 31, then you know that your result will not be enough. Your result will be good, but not good. Uh, well, how can I explain it? So you, you, will be, you will have a change, but probably not what you, will, what you, are, what you are expecting. Okay. So I can take six liters of fat. Imagine if I can take six liters on a 100 pound person or even a 200 pound person. Of course, in the 100 pound person, the six liter will be a dramatic change. That in a 200 pound person will only be a change, not dramatic. So it's not, I don't have a limit on BMI, but I do prefer when the patient comes in the way that they're supposed to be for a plastic surgery. Okay. Entonces vamos a, vamos a hablar ahora de las combinaciones de los procedimientos en una paciente. ¿Cuáles son eh, las combinaciones eh, actualmente que usted realiza? Por ejemplo, una paciente quiere cotizar un tommy top, lipo, senos. I, uh, okay, so uh, combinations is, I do big combinations. I do combinations, but again, wait. Where is the risk in plastic surgery? Losing a lot of blood. So I have a limit on the amount of blood that you can lose safely. 
So it, that's medical. That that's something that everyone should know. If I take too much pad, you will lose too much blood, and then you will need a transfusion. You will need. You will be. Oh, that's that's a medical problem then. So usually when I do combinations, you have to be in a really good BMI, and your blood count have to be really high. So it's your health has to be in the perfect condition and your body has to be in the perfect condition to have a mommy recovery. So okay. I do, I do it really often. I, well, tomorrow I'm doing a breast lift with implants and tummy tuck and liposuction to the abdomen, flanks, back and BBL. So that's the regular big mommy recovery. Okay. Uh, and I'm doing it tomorrow, but there's no problem. The patient is in the correct weight. She is in 13.8 of hemoglobin. So why not? But if you are not in that conditions, I will not do it. Okay. Patients who overweight do not qualify for a mommy recovery. You will have to separate the procedures. You will have to do first the tummy tuck and then the breast. Why in that order? Because if, if I have to do a no more liposuction then, then I just you do it in the moment of the breast. Mm -hmm. So that's the way that I will prefer. I will always prefer to do abdomen, flanks, liposuction and BBL first. Mm -hmm. And then breast, and if we need to do a little more liposuction, then we do it with the breast at that moment. So that's okay. that's why I prefer that routine. Okay. It's it's a just a way to do it. You can do it on the contrary, but it's the way that I prefer to do it. Okay. Entonces, ¿cuál es el nivel de hemoglobina que una paciente tiene que tener? At least 13. Okay. If it's a really small surgery, it could be over 12.5, but usually it's not that big, that small surgery. So. We, at least 13. Okay. Your health is the priority of everyone and should be. So if you are not in a good condition, this is a cosmetic surgery. Why would you risk your life for a cosmetic surgery? Wait the time that you have to wait and do it at the moment that you are able to do it. Exacto. Okay. Entonces, una preguntita, doctor. ¿Cuánto es el tiempo mínimo que una paciente tiene que estar acá en la República Dominicana después de cirugía? Depends. Uh, after a surgery, She's asking about the time. Okay, it's simple. Big surgeries, at least 14 days. We use trains that you, that you need to remove. We need to do stitches that we also have to remove. So if you go back to your country, before we do all that, who's going to take care of you? That's simple. At least 14 days after the surgery. And at least two days before the surgery. Uh, uh, usually for me, I do a lot of tests, a lot of, a lot of things. So it takes a whole day to do all three of us. Okay. And also, your blood needs to settle after a, flight, after a flight. So two days before, 14 days after, 17 days. And the two days before needs to be working day, because if you arrive here on Saturday, we cannot do nothing. We can't do tests, we can't do anything at all. So you have to be here properly to do the test. So you have to arrive on Monday or or a Thursday or something like that. So we are able to do the test, the pre-op, everything, and then we do the surgery. Okay. So your health, that's for regular surgery, body surgeries. But if you're doing a, a breast surgery, a breast augmentation, only augmentation, you could do it. You could live in 10 days because there's no stitches, there's no drains, there's not anything at all. But usually it's 17 days. Okay. Para la paciente, doctor, que vienen a hacerse el aumento de, de los senos, eh, ¿Las pacientes tienen la libertad de querer ponerse la, el tamaño de implantes que ella deseen? ¿O usted le, le dice, bueno, mira, realmente el implante que, que, que va con tu cuerpo, con tu tamaño, con tu contextura, es tal talla? When we use, when we do breast augmentations, it's a mix. Because how do we choose a size of the implant? It's really, really easy. I, I, took, I took some measures of your body and look at the limits, the maximum amount of implant, the biggest implant that I can use. So I take that measure, I see what I could do without doing any harm, without getting out of proportions, without be going bigger than your chest allows. And I take that measure. So I imagine that the maximum is 400 cc for you. Then I use scissors. So you will be with me and you will put a special bra and you will put a special implants that are sizers and then we go to the one that you like. If, I will tell you, I cannot go over 400, just a number. You will choose the one that you like below 400. 
whatever you want. If you you prefer 395, it fits. I will do it. Don't problem. It's not a problem because that's what you like, and it's medically permitted. So I'm not doing any harm to you. I'm not distorting the body. I'm making it still getting into the into what is correct. But you will choose the implant, but I will put the limit. So okay. there is a limit for a safety parameters. If you are in the safety in the safety zone, in the safe zone, I will do whatever you want. Okay, perfect. Hablemos ahora de de los implantes en las pantorrillas. Okay. Usted trabaja con ese tipo yeah. de implantes. Do ¿Qué, I do. ¿Qué riesgo puede tener? Calf implants is a not really common surgery. I don't know why because it's a really easy going surgery. It's a surgery that we can do it even in 40 minutes. It's a simple surgery. It, it have it doesn't have a lot of complications, almost nothing at all. Well, the only complication, common complication, is that you open the wound and then we have to take the implant out. But that's not really common. It's, it's a simple surgery, fast surgery, and with great results. So I do it. I perform it not as often as I would like to do it. It is true that it's not a cheap, it's not, it's an expensive surgery because the implants are expensive. Mm. They're the same as like the butt implants, they're really expensive. It's not like a breast implant that is cheap. Well, more affordable, it's not cheap at all. But mm -hmm. you, you see the toe, and mainly patients, that's not the main concern. They usually go first to the other parts of the body, and then if everything's okay, they go to the calf. Okay. But it's a good surgery, it's a safe surgery. Mm -hmm. If the surgeon knows what there is, what he's doing, it's a really fast and easy surgery. Okay, okay. Yeah. Para los pacientes, doctor, que han perdido mucho peso ya después de una cirugía bariátrica, que que quieren hacerse todo lo que es el retiro de, de la piel, ¿no? O sobrante. Okay. El tema de las de las cirugías en los muslos. Okay. Hay mucha paciente que tienen un temor a, al tipo de cicatriz, donde se le, se, usted hace la, la, la cicatriz, porque hablemos un poco de ese tipo de, de cirugía en so los muslos. We need to understand that extreme weight loss patient is a condition. The, the, when you have lost a lot of your, well, a lot of the weight, a big percentage of your body mass, you need to understand that your shirt doesn't fit you anymore. So the skin doesn't fit you anymore. Everything will be bigger than your body is right now. So you need to understand that you will be changing skin for scars. There's no way to avoid that. You are gonna be changing. Being fat, <coughs> looking that you are not, you don't want to look with scars. Health, everything, you will be improving, but you will gain scars. So. Whenever skin is, whenever we have an ex excess of skin, you have to know that you, the only way to remove it is to leave a scar. Tummy tuck, scar is beautiful because we can hide it properly. Breast, we already know, everyone knows that the scar is also, if you, if you scar good, then you will have a really good, really beautiful scar. Breast and arm are a different area. Why? Because there are motions area. So imagine that I'm doing a scar here, Every time you're moving, you're moving every time. So I cannot guarantee that the scars of the breast, of the arms and the tights will be beautiful. No one can. So that depends on how your life is, that depends on the way you are at the moment. Because some patients lose the weight but you still have, are still overweight. So it depends on a lot of factors. But you need to understand that you will end with a scar. Sometimes it's not a beauty scar and it's not pretty, but you need to decide, you are going to change a big flap, a big excess of skin and fat with the scar or not. If you decide that you are able to accept the scar and it might be ugly, then do the procedure. So that's why I, for patients that is simply have a little amount of extra skin, I just don't do it. Okay. Even in the thighs, even in the arms. Well, there are procedures in the thighs that you can hide it, but it's for a little, little bit of amount of skin. Okay. But when you have Ex, really excess, excess of skin, you need a scar. That's simple. Yeah. And there's no way to avoid it. There's not a plastic surgeon with a different technique. Sutures are always the same. Plastic surgeons' techniques are similar, so it could be different, but at the end, we have to remove the skin and leave a scar. So yeah. you have to decide. You want the extra skin or you want the scar? Okay. Simple as that. Okay. 
Perfecto. Eh, doctor, ¿cuántos masajes las pacientes que se operan con usted necesitan realizarse después de la cirugía? At least 10 sessions. Okay. I, are, I always ask my patients to go after the third day of the surgery to start the massages, even with the drain on. I use a 360 uh, drain, so you will have the drain for about 7 days to 10 days and massages start with the drain and you go with the drain. So, uh, massages for 10 days at least, mm -hmm. then we we'll decide if you need more or not. Okay. And that's, fa that's part of why you have to stay the perfect, the right amount of time because we need to be sure that you are without fluids before leaving. Going back to your home without being ready is not really not a good idea. Okay. Sí. Okay, doctor. ¿Qué tipo de alimentación usted le recomienda a las pacientes tener después de la cirugía? ¿Qué está, qué hay de cierto de que las pacientes no deben iniciar un plan de dieta, ¿no? De, de comer bajas calorías y eso después de, de tener una cirugía. Proteins. Okay. Have you ever heard of proteins? When you are, when you have a surgery, you lose proteins. You leave proteins to live. You leave proteins to heal. You leave proteins to everything. So you need to eat proteins. Okay. Besides that, whatever you want. Okay. I don't care about diet after surgery. I really choose my patients. So if you are in the in a first in the right way to do the surgery is because you know how to eat. Mm -hmm. So I don't interfere how the patients eat. I only say that they do have to eat proteins. Okay. You need it to heal, you need to the wounds need proteins to close. Everything needs protein to heal. So you need to eat proteins, besides that, do whatever you normally do. If you are a good eater. But remember, I'm not the one of the kind of doctors that have patients just to make them thinner. This is not a, a, a losing weight program. This is not a this is not a surgery to lose weight. This is a surgery to do the sculpture, to do to reshape the body. But it's not to lose weight. So you have to lose weight first. You have to be ready for the procedure. And when you are ready, you already know how to eat. You already know how to live. And then I can do the surgery. And that's why my patients usually don't get complicated because they are they are prepared physically exactly. before the surgery. Okay. Hablemos ahora de la ingesta de, de líquido, de la hidratación después de la cirugía. So, if there's no alcohol, as much as you can. Okay. You cannot drink alcohol after the surgery. Not at all. Antibiotics and alcohol doesn't work. So, no alcohol. Besides that, as much liquids as you can. Okay. Water, even sodas. I don't care. You just drink. You need okay. it. You need it to heal. Okay. Water is better, of course. Okay. Para las pacientes, doctor, que son fumadoras. Smoking is completely forbidden in surgeries. You need to stop smoking for a month before the surgery. That's proven. That's the way I can give you a mountain of works, studies that says that if you smoke, you will get complicated. So why would you risk it? It's your life. It's not my life. It's your life. So don't lie about smoking. If you smoke, you have to stop for a month. It's not because the lung and everything. The lungs doesn't matter here right now. The problem is that the blood will not get to the tissues and the tissues will die. And your scars will open and you will lose part of the skin and you will need a reconstruction and you will... The complications are... I won't even finish today if we start in of the complications that could happen to a smoker. So, no smoker in my patients. Okay. If you smoke, perfect, there's no problem. A month before the surgery, you need to stop. Hookah is smoking. You need to stop hookah as well. Hookah is more dangerous than even cigarettes. People don't believe it. I, I, the biggest complications that I had in my life are with patients that smoke hookah and didn't tell me. Cigarettes is even less than hookah. I, I could even imagine that. So hookah is worse because you think you know what you're smoking and you don't. Cigarettes are really controlled and everybody knows what it is. Mm -hmm. With the hookah, it's not like that. There's, you don't even know what you're smoking, so no hookah for a month as well. Okay. ¿Y qué tiempo antes de cirugía deben de parar en la ingesta de alcohol? Two or three days. For no. the alcohol. Okay. Yeah, alcohol is not. Alcohol is important after. Alcohol is important with the antibiotic. Okay. Of course, you kind of drink the day before the surgery. That's, okay. I hope that everyone knows that. But alcohol before the surgery is not really important. Okay. Okay. 
¿Algunos pacientes, doctor, entienden que cuando vienen para acá hacia la República Dominicana a hacerse cirugía, pueden traer todos sus análisis, vamos a decir, laboratorios, estudios, para poderse hacer la cirugía acá? ¿Es aceptable? You need to understand a few things. First of all, as the same way as I'm not a doctor in your country, your laboratories are not allowed in this country. It's, it's a law. It's mandatory. So our studies here have to be, the law asks us to do studies. So if we accept studies that are not from our country, we're breaking the law because they are not approved. They have not been checked by Dominican health system. They are not, so this, the health system doesn't approve studies from other countries. One other thing, even if you don't believe it, I have patients that ask all their friends to do their study for them. That's crazy, I know. But I need to see, I need to trust the, the, the laboratory. I need to trust that they will check your idea. I need to trust that you are actually yours. It's not that I don't believe in you, but I, my experience have made me to don't believe in that. So it's, I'm sorry to say it, but I even asked, When, when Santo Domingo is different because we don't have, in, in every clinic there we don't have uh, laboratories. With Puerto Plata and Punta Cana, I even asked the patients to have done the laboratories in the hospital. But they have to be done there because I know how they work, I know how they do, they, they know that they, they will not trick me. And I'm sorry to say it, but I have been tricked. Okay. That's, that's bad. I, I had a patient that it almost died, I'm sorry to say it, because Her hemoglobin level was nine before the surgery, and she knew that she I will not do the surgery, and she asked a sister to do the blood count, and when she came with the test, it was 13. And I'm, of course I would do the surgery in 13. I put it in the surgery, I started doing my liposuction, and if it wasn't because of the my, my anesthesiology, was a great anesthesiology, and realized that she was not in 13, I would have killed her. Yeah. And it's not my fault. Of course it's my fault because I didn't, she, I didn't, I accept a blood test that it wasn't, but she lied to me and I, she put her life in danger because she didn't do what she was supposed to do. So laboratories have to be here. Laboratories have to be done by facilities that we trust because at the end, your life is in our hands and I don't want someone to die because they lied to me. I really don't. And this is surgery. I don't, we don't like to speak about death, but it can happen. Mainly one patient lie. Mm -hmm. So don't lie to your, your doctors and do what they are supposed to do. I have to do my part, but you have to do yours. Ok, perfecto. Muchas pacientes, doctor, también eh, preguntan si pueden traer sus medicinas desde su país de origen, okay. si le pueden servir acá. Yes. ¿Usted le, le envía un, un listado de las medicinas que debe traer? Cuando el paciente me pregunta, I tell them the medication that I use. It doesn't matter. If they bring it from your country or you buy it here, it doesn't change. The medications are always the same. If you bring the same antibiotics that I ask, the same medication, everything, so it doesn't matter what you buy. Okay. Because that's a brand. Brands are not supposed to be fake, so mm -hmm. I don't. I don't care what you buy. Okay. It's not a. It's not a requirement that I say just bring it with you. I even think they're here that are, are cheaper than there mm -hmm. in every other country. So uh, every time the p patient asks me, ah, do I need to bring all, a list of things that everyone says that you need to bring? I don't find it real. I think that you buying it here is easier. Is the right one? Is way more rare and even cheaper okay. so I don't, I don't i don't think it's it worth to bring all the things that you you will not end using mm -hmm. okay. para las pacientes doctor con unas condiciones eh, de salud como han tenido ya trasplantes de riñones problemas en el hígado las pacientes que tienen condiciones eh, de salud deben de traer un permiso de su médico de cabecera de su especialista so medical conditions We can, uh, we can do plastic surgery in patients with medical conditions that are stable. But I, I go a little over the line, a little over what we required. But I ask for your, med your doctor, the one that treats you, to sign a release to do it. And after you arrive here, I will get another one, specialist from our country, to do the same. Because your doctor is not a doctor in the Dominican Republic but he's the one that knows you. 
So the one that knows you authorize the surgery, my mind is easy. But I also need the legal protection from the doctor in Dominican Republic that actually knows the specialty, that is a specialty in that area, and they will also have to release you for the surgery. So I ask for both of them. Okay. Safety is the most important part. So, and patients say, no, I have to pay more for that. Yes, you have to pay more for that, but your life worth it. Exacto. As simple as that. Okay. Okay, una pacientita pregunta, doctor, ella dice que ella tuvo cesárea hace tres meses, mm -hmm. eh, un pardo de mellizos. Mm -hmm. ¿Cuántas, ¿Cuántos meses debe esperar para hacerse un tommy top? For every surgery, it doesn't matter what surgery it is, you need to wait at least six months if you're not breastfeeding. Okay. When you're breastfeeding, hormones are crazy. So is the body. So if you're breastfeeding, you have to wait at least three months until after you stop completely breastfeeding. So the hormones get back to normal. So it's a simple rule. If you are not breastfeeding, six months after the after the C-section, after the after giving birth. If you are breastfeeding, three months after you stop. Okay. So it's at least six months, but it could be more. Exactly. It depends on how you are. Ah, but I'm, it's not my breast that I'm going to do the surgery. I just don't care. Your hormones, it's not the milk, it's not everything like that. It's the hormones are not the way they are supposed to be. So healing will not be the same. Uh, oh, that's enough. Healing will not be the same. So what else do you need? What else do you need to know that your healing probably will not be enough? Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay. Para la paciente doctor que quieren hacerse implantes en los senos, otra vez tengo acá una pregunta. Okay. Don, ¿Cómo te realiza el, los implantes? ¿Detrás del músculo? There are indications for everything. Mm -hmm. If I have to ask in Spanish, just let me know. Eh? Okay. Así. Oh, okay, because if the patient, if the patient asks in Spanish, it's better to ask in claro. Spanish. So, uh, the implants have indications for everything. Techniques are, they're supposed to be. If you have that condition, you use this technique. If you have this one, you use the other technique. If you have so, I do all of the techniques. I'm trained in all of them. I do it often. I do uh, over the muscle, below the muscle. I do do a plane. I do the scars in below here and, and everywhere because I'm training all of them. But there's an indication. What is the, what's the indication? If your breasts have enough coverage to hold the breast and to hide the implant without even showing, then I always do it over the muscle. Okay. If you don't have enough coverage for the implant, then I do it in a dual plane. Okay. If you have a reconstruction, it has to be under the muscle completely. So everyone has an indication. When I do a lift, will you put, will you put it under the muscle because it will look better? It depends on the tissue because sometimes I even prefer to put it over the muscle because the tissue is not enough and it will not hold it. So every patient has its indication. The result will be the same. That's a lie that if you put it under or over, well, it's, it's different. The difference is the indication. If you put, if you use the right technique on the right patient, it will always be the same. So okay. yeah, I ask my patient, don't interfere with the indications. What you need is what I'm going to do. What you can choose is the implant size, what you can choose is the result you want. Show me what you want and I have to get the technique to deliver. Okay. So that, that's what I studied for, for 13 years. So okay. it's, I don't want to sound rude, but that's, you want a good result, tell me what you want and I have to find the right technique to deliver that result. Okay. Una paciente pregunta, doctor, eh, ella tiene hígado graso, okay. ya así en español, parece que, que lo, lo, lo escucharon cuando usted dijo esa parte y están preguntando en español. Okay. Eh, ella tiene hígado graso, está en tratamiento, tiene ya seis meses en tratamiento. Eh, ¿Qué tiempo más tengo que esperar para hacerme la cirugía? No tiene nada que ver conmigo, eso lo decide su especialista. Cuando su especialista decida que usted está en condiciones para ser operada, se puede operar. Okay. Por eso, cada médico es una especialidad. Yo no sé de esa área. 
Okay. Y no debo por qué meterme. Así como no debo meterme en ginecología, así como no debo meterme en ninguna otra. Yo soy cirujano plástico. Okay. Entonces, su especialista que le está tratando me va a decir a mí cuándo puede operarse. Ya se puede operar, perfecto. Viene un papelito firmado y escrito que dice, ¿puede operarse? Yo lo opero. Okay. Hasta que eso no pase, no hay cirugía. Perfecto. Entonces ahora vamos al inglés. Eh, tuve una cirugía hace seis meses con un cirujano donde no quedé contenta. La cicatriz en mi tummy top eh, tiene queloides. Si voy de usted para una reconstrucción, ¿qué tipo de tratamiento me van a indicar para el, que no me dé, vuelva otra vez a producir queloides? Queloides es our nightmare. You need to understand it. It's not our fault. It's not your fault. It's the way that your body heals. There are many techniques that lower your chances of a keloid, but none of them guarantee that you will not get it. So even if I do a new scar, even if I do the corticoid injection, even if I, if I send you to radiotherapy, even if I do everything at all, you still have a 50-50 chance that you will get the keloid again, and it could be even worse. So, what do I have to say to people that have keloids? We can try, but we are trying. I cannot promise it. I will do all that I can, but if it works, perfectly. If it didn't work, there's nothing else to do. What is the main problem with keloids? The, the, if you have keloids and you are treated properly, you could stop the growth. Because if you have done, if you do, if you do the procedure that is injecting the the asteroids every three weeks, every four weeks, for six, seven, eight months. Then we stop the keloid. The problem is with our, with our patients. They come here and they stay only two weeks and they just stop any treatment at all. So if you have keloids and you don't live here, you need to find someone in your country to do the injections. And that injections are necessary. So that's the main problem with patients that, that, are, that have keloids. Okay. And there's nothing that we can do to guarantee that it will not come back. Nothing at all. Okay. Sabemos, doctor, que usted realiza todos los tipos de cirugías plásticas que sus pacientes deseen. Pero, ¿cuál es la cirugía que más a usted le gusta realizar? Face surgery. ¿Sí? Face surgery. I'm a, I have a subspecialty in face surgeries. I do a lot of facelifts. I do a lot of nose surgeries. I do a lip. All from here to the uh, from above. That's my specialty, actually. I, I do body surgeries, of course. That everyone once body surgery but right now I'm about to be I think I am 50% face and 50% body that's a lot of faces mm -hmm. yeah. that's a lot that's way a lot of faces so I, every day I'm going to getting more because my name is getting more in the street that I'm good in faces I do body of course well all of you have seen my results I hope uh, but faces are my, are my favorite okay in the body breast I like I like I like a challenge yeah. you need to understand I like a challenge surgeries are really easy it's not my it's not my thing I do it of course I would do it I would but I like challenges and by challenge I don't mean fat I'm not I'm not saying that if you are fat that's a challenge for me no that's not I would not do it I mean I mean surgeries that challenge my skills I do a lot of surgeries that are a little complicated uh, face are a challenge, so I, that's what I love them. Okay. So. Okay. Entonces, doctor, un consejo para las pacientes eh, que quieran venir donde usted, eh, como usted le, le indica cómo prepararse antes de cirugía para que su cirugía sea, su recuperación sea más, más rápida. Okay, so, uh, as I said before, how you eat is everything in life. Okay. If you eat properly, you will have a proper recuperation. Your healing will be fast, your healing will be easy, your healing will be everything. everything. So, plastic surgery is not a lose weight program. You do are this, we don't do this for you to lose weight. This doesn't work. Mainly simple as that. So you have to be in a good eating system, you have to be eating well, you have to be in the best weight that you can be. The best results are the ones that are done when the patient is in the weight that they like to maintain. Because imagine that I do a surgery in you and after that you lose 30 pounds. It will not be good. 
So the result will be, you will lose the result because there will be more extra skin. Mm -hmm. So get to the way, get a really eating program, go, go and eat properly, eat your, your proteins, eat your salad, don't eat fried. Fry is, fry is good in flavor, but it just destroy your body. Uh, sugar, control the sugar. So eat properly, go to a nice weight, and then you will not eat, ne need anything at all. I don't, I don't, I'm not the kind of doctor that say, yo, vitamins for everyone. Multivitamins for everyone. No, eat good, eat properly, and you will not need a multivitamin. Okay. If you are in a good weight, if you are eating healthily, you are healthy so that's all that you need if you come to the surgery in that conditions there's a 95 percent chance that you will have an excellent result okay. an excellent experience overall you will not be tired you will support you will be you will tolerate the process Entonces, doctor, ya para finalizar le a sus pacientes eh, nueva vez las que se conectaron ya ahora cuáles son los centros donde usted labora I work in Puerto Plata in Central Medical Brunigal. It's a private hospital, it's not a clinic, it's a private hospital. Here in Plastic Center, in this is Santo Domingo, it's a plastic it's a plastic surgery clinic. And I will mention it only to mention it, but that's not the place that I actually like to work. It's in Central Medical Punta Cana. It's a really nice hospital, but it's too far from my house, so that's why I try to <laughs> avoid it every time. Every day I'm trying to avoid it. Just get to Puerto Plata or Santo Domingo. Unless you live in Punta Cana, I will not do the surgery there. Okay. If you don't live in Punta Cana, then I will send you to Puerto Plata or Santo Domingo. Because okay. it's, it's way too far. I don't have the time to just be going to Santo mm -hmm. Punta Cana to do it. Okay. A great hospital. Great hospital, amazing. But logistically, mm -hmm. it just doesn't work. Ok, perfecto. Okay. Fue un placer para nosotros, doctor, tenerlos acá en esta super entrevista. Eh, esperamos otra vez que se repita esto acá, ¿no? Y que, y que sea un poquito más fácil. Si ellos me dejaron, lo haría. El problema es que el paciente no me dejaron. Gracias, gracias. Tenemos muchos pacientes, así que no tenemos mucho tiempo para hacer live interviews. I love it. I like to talk, as you can see. I, I enjoy talking. I enjoy talking to my patients. But usually, to match a time for you that works a lot of mm -hmm. with me, it's not that easy. So, mm -hmm. of course I try. Of sí. course I try. Y una cosa, una cosa que estuve viendo, doctor, a sus pacientes les, les encanta la forma como usted le, le dice las cosas. O sea, la forma como usted le, le explica cómo hacer cirugía, la forma como va a ser la recuperación. Ella les gusta que usted les I, habla, les explica todo. I don't lie. I don't lie. If you ask me if it will hurt, and it will hurt, I will tell you that it will hurt. If, I, if you ask me, if you're going to have a surgery, I will tell you, your result will not be that moment. You will see it when, because the patients are not comfortable, the patients doesn't, are not happy with the result when the doctor doesn't explain them what is going to happen. I just published in, what, in my, my Instagram uh, a review, we could say it, of two plastic surgeries that was a no, no surgery. No, rhinoplasty is the one that takes more time for you to see the result. You need to wait three months, and those first three months are like crazy. The nose are distorted. You know, some days you want to the left, to the right, to it's ugly, another day is beautiful. So the patient, if you don't prepare the patient to know that that is going to happen, they just are not happy for the first three months. So that review that I just received, it was a patient that to that day was the third month of her, she was like, okay, you told me, I don't remember the words, but like, you told me you prepared me, I will sí. take it, and at the end you deliver. So that's why I talk a lot and I say a lot of things. Some people don't like it. Some people think I say I'm a little rude saying things. Some people say that I, I should do be a little more flexible, but it's, if it's for your safety, it is for your results, I will not be more flexible. I'm sorry, but... Your life is more important for me than what you think of flexibility. So your life goes first. It will always be. Es lo más importante, will always realmente. Be. Okay. Muchísimo gusto, doctor. Fue un placer y que pase feliz resto de la tarde. Okay. Bye -bye. Have a good day.